If you asked me what streaming software you should use to go live three years ago, I probably would have said Streamlabs without a doubt. It is straightforward and the easiest to get set up with and go live. But then two years ago, I probably would have said OBS because it works for stream elements and it's just overall better. And now in 2024, if you ask me again, well, so much has changed. There are so many options for streaming software, alerts, platforms, and they all do very different things. Today, I wanna to break down four years worth of streaming and content creation experience to cover the major streaming software, their pros, cons, are they good for beginners? Will other streamers bully you for using them? Do they make your game lag? Can they make you grow faster? What alert platforms go well with them? What drama have the brands gotten into? And of course, which is the absolute best for you? to use. And I don't think there is a simple answer anymore. All of that and more is coming up, but first, thank you to our sponsor, Owned. Owned, your one-stop shop as a streamer have created an entire scene editor and integrated into their free Owned Pro tool. This means not only can you now get full overlays from webcam borders, alerts, labels, and more set up in just three clicks, but you can also use their chatbot, their auto moderator, and try out any of their free full overlay packs without paying anything. And if you want to use literally any of the packs on their website, well, you can upgrade from the free version to the paid and get access to their entire library. And then if you kick in a little extra a month, you'll also get access to the entire Epidemic Sound Library, gaining access to over 40,000 songs and 90,000 sound effects. If you want to support me, check out the link in the description and try out Own Pro for free, especially their new scene editor because I think it's pretty damn cool. To kick this off, I think it's probably important to cover the difference between Streamlabs and OBS because many don't even know that. OBS or Open Broadcasting Software is the standard for recording and streaming from your desktop. And because it's open source software, it means anyone can use it, study it, change it, and distribute the software and its source code. This is meant to help encourage industry growth and innovation, which OBS has absolutely done. Streaming would not be where it is today without OBS and their team. But this also means Streamlabs, who were originally an alerts and label platform, were able to take the source code for OBS and use it as their bones. And then they built a skin around it. And not just the skin, but they also built teeth, hair, sweaty feet in the form of alerts widgets, their chat boxes, and a lot of other features they've built on top. That is why it's called Streamlabs OBS, or why it used to be called Streamlabs OBS before the drama, which I will cover the drama soon because I think it's important you understand it. But first, what are the pros and cons of Streamlabs? Who should use it and why? Streamlabs OBS has added a lot of features over the years and weirdly also removed a lot of features that OBS built in for some reason. And I'll cover those soon. In short, it does almost everything OBS does, but it also has built in the alerts widgets, the chat widgets, the stream label widgets, and have taken all those things who used to need other software for and integrated it into just the one tool. This was great for beginners as well. And they've been very focused on helping beginners, which is why they also added the overlay tool. Essentially, a designer like myself or own create overlays and they set them up in Streamlabs and export them out as dot overlays. This means anyone can download that dot overlay and install it with literally one click, which is kind of amazing. Whereas OBS requires you to set it up manually piece by piece. They've also added an amazing tool called selective recording, meaning when I'm live, I can say, hey, record my stream for editing later, but don't record my alerts that pop up on screen. Meaning I'll just have my gameplay and my webcam, which is much better for editing. But it's not all good news. All these features are great for beginners, yes, which means mostly beginners use the software and that means they can't fix the issues it has. For example, Streamlabs just being open uses on average a minimum of 8% more CPU than OBS. This is before you even try stream or record. It's just so bloated already. 8% sounds small until you click go live or until you realize that the beginners who use it don't have beefy PCs. Not to mention it's incredibly buggy these days with constant glitches, alerts, lagging, their widget theme resetting and so many other things. It's such a shame because often Often new streamers come to our Discord for help and our group of professional Twitch partners and streamers who volunteer to help these beginners will spend ages trying to and sadly because Streamlabs is just so strangely unstable the solution often tends to be, hey, can you try this out in OBS and does the problem still exist? And well, they usually always say, no, OBS works perfectly. And then we just link them the videos that I've made on OBS and they're set up and streaming perfectly in seconds. And this of course isn't even mentioning all the drama, which began when Streamlabs asked OBS if they could use OBS in their name. The OBS team asked politely not to, and then uh, they did it anyway. Or another example is when they paid for ads to appear above the original OBS project website to intercept new people looking for OBS. Or when they stole an entire website and product word for word off Lightstream, or taking free tools that people can use and locking them behind a paywall to make new creators subscribe to their premium version because they don't know that these tools exist for free already. Genuinely, it hurts to see how it's all gone down because I know several of the Streamlabs team and have worked with them in the past, even been sponsored by them in the past. But that doesn't mean you, the user, shouldn't know all the facts, which is why you should also know the OBS devs have sort of forgiven them? In short, a few days after the biggest parts of this drama came out, OBS quietly added Logitech as a member of their highest tier sponsor, which 
you don't know, Logitech owns Streamlabs. And for some reason, nobody really talked about that. So maybe we should just move on and talk about OBS instead. Look, this is the OG. This does everything you will need. And anything it doesn't do, there is a plugin for it that can be installed with one click these days. It will be as resource intensive on your PC as you make it in the settings. It's not bloated, it's easy to use, and it has the most passionate community of content creators and developers working to make it the best tool for every streamer out there. OBS will always work better than Streamlabs, of course, if you set it up right. The only major drawback is that to a beginner, it is very daunting to open OBS. There is no quick installs, as I said, so it has to be done manually. But I would argue this means that you get more experience as a creator. It has no alerts, chat labels, or other widgets built in, so you'll need third-party software, which I will cover soon. But as we've seen, this also could be a pro, because if they'd integrated all those things, it could have caused the software to become unfocused and bloated. And because you'll need an alert platform, let's get into into that as well. First up, Streamlabs. Yes, it is an alert platform, but they've also made it so that a lot of their alerts and widgets barely function unless Streamlabs is also open and you're streaming from it. It's also quite glitchy and the way they have the setup and customization is quite archaic and behind the times. There's no visual scene or alert editor, which should be industry standard, but hey, at least it works with YouTube and Twitch. Stream Elements is next and this truly is the go-to for many streamers. It works with YouTube and Twitch and it uses a visual scene editor approach to let you customize alerts, chat, stream labels, and everything else visually making it easier for beginners. It isn't resource intensive and it does a great job slotting directly into OBS, but be aware if you use stream elements, they will spam you with, to be honest, predatory pay per performance sponsorships. These will come through constantly and if you accept them, well, it means you're gonna spend a lot of time advertising a brand that will likely not pay you at the end because you didn't reach their performance goal. Next is Twitch alerts. While they lack chat widgets, stream labels, and all the other bells and whistles that these other tools have, I love them. They are built directly into Twitch so they don't work with YouTube, obviously, but the amount of customization and generally cool shit you can do with them is next level. Finally, Streamerbot. This is the complex bastard child of some geniuses and it has to be the all time greatest tool for streamers. You can create not just alerts, but make it so viewers, donations, channel points, bits, subs, follows, whatever it is, can trigger all sorts of things from changing your lights behind you, turning on sources in OBS, playing songs, literally anything you can think of, Streamerbot can pretty much do it. It's just also very confusing to look at when you start, but it's worth it because it has to be the all time deepest platform. And finally, before I tell you the best software and the combo you should be using, I should say Own Pro, who yes, sponsored this video, is an alert system. It's a scene editor. It's everything I mentioned in the ad read, so I won't go over it again. I just think it's important to mention it is an option. So which should you use? Well, I have a dirty little secret about this entire debate. These days, if I were to start again from scratch, I would like to be told to go with OBS. OBS and Twitch alerts personally, or if I was on YouTube, OBS and stream elements. Now I mentioned a dirty little secret. Well, let me tell you something that I wish people would say more often in this industry. Whichever you choose to use, doesn't fucking matter. If your stream does everything you want it to, that's all that matters. At the end of the day, the two programs are practically identical and a viewer can't tell you're using one or the other. In filmmaking, we used to say, it doesn't matter how you get the shot. It doesn't matter what camera you use. It only matters what's in the frame because that's what makes the viewer feel. If your stream is high quality, if it's clear, you sound good and does everything you want it to for your audience, then use whatever the hell you want. Stop the idiotic debating. And if you want to learn how to use OBS, click here. If you want to learn Twitch alerts, click here. If you want to become a member to support the content for just $1, click here or, or here. I'll put, it, I'll put it on one side. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next week.